So these are probably the coolest ceramics I've ever seen, not just because they look really cool, you know, they're eye-catching and all that, but because they're made in a very unconventional way. They're actually 3D printed. Normally when you have ceramics like this or like this, this one's from Crate and Barrel, this one's another ceramic artist I really like, Ola Emporium, they can be, you know, hand molded or spun on a pottery wheel. Then you'll throw them in a kiln to fire them. Then you will glaze them and fire them again. These ceramics, are made a little bit differently. They are printed with this crazy setup and there is still a fair bit of manual adjustment as well as firing and glazing. And the way the team that makes these, it's called Ceramica Studio, puts these things together is just so interesting and fascinating. And especially once I dove a couple layers in and I realized there's some really cool stuff here. I just thought I had to share this. Now, every now and then on the channel, I'll review something just because I like it and I think it's really cool. And this is definitely one of those cases. But also this thing, a 3D printed ceramic dosing cup by Ceramica Studio, who makes all this cool stuff is probably the thing that I get asked the most often about. Like people will see it in my videos and it's like, where is that thing from? Because that is so cool. Ceramica Studio is based in California and really it's owned by two people, Diego Monzon and his wife, Victoria Rodriguez. And I first saw these cups, actually these ones on another very cool project. And that is the Fiamma family restoration by Mug shot NYC who is owned by a guy named Gino and he does these beautiful restorations of these you know 80s 90s amazing cute little espresso machines and in his product photography was sitting very quietly one of these little cups you know the espresso was getting pulled into it so I reached out to Gino I'd connected with him and I said dude like that cup where where's that cup from and he turned me on to Ceramica Studio and I followed them on Instagram I lurked for quite a while, just kind of like appreciating the beautiful videos that Diego will put out. And then I saw him release this, which is the first dosing cup that they produce. And if you don't know what a dosing cup is, if you're not a coffee enthusiast, it probably seems a bit silly, but you weigh your beans into them. If you want, you can spray a little bit of water on to reduce static when you grind, you shake it up, and then you dump it into your grinder. After I saw this, I ended up connecting with Diego. He had actually seen some of my videos here on the channel and he ended up sending over a version of the dosing cup as well as a couple other little cups. And I immediately fell in love with the thing. Like it just feels so cool to touch. It looks so cool. It's very unique, just a really nice object to integrate into your world on a daily basis. Is it the type of thing that you actually need to have to make better coffee? Absolutely not. It is a very nice thing though. And as I kind of kept connecting with Diego over time, I got more and more sucked into this world of 3D printing some ceramics and how him and Victoria were doing all this. Super cool. Now, Sarah and I have actually made a handful of ceramics before, you know, just in like little date classes or whatever. And I also know a little bit about 3D printing, enough to know that I could see how bringing these two worlds together was going to be very difficult and present some very unique challenges. And that was just kind of rolling in the back of my mind. But as I was like following these guys on Instagram and seeing what they were doing and how well and how beautiful their pieces were coming out, it just really struck me the passion that they were putting into these things and just making it work so well. Both Diego and Victoria grew up in Cuba. Diego was very kind of into CNC, you know, milling and all this kind of thing that's like robotic cutting and laser cutting and all these things. And Victoria was really into ceramics and eventually they moved to the US and they ended up combining these passions into one thing. Now, when I saw these things online, I hadn't really had a chance to connect with Diego or Victoria yet. I just saw the videos and I thought, oh, this is a really cool way to kind of scale up production, make doing ceramics more consistent, do it at scale, make all the whole thing easier. And that I learned eventually is not really true at all. 
What I learned when I actually got to talking with them about this is, and it makes total sense, 3D printing clay is kind of like 3D printing with toothpaste. You know, it's very soft, it's gooey, gravity can do weird things with it, you can get bubbles in it, and there's a lot to go wrong that doesn't necessarily happen with plastic in the same way. A lot can go wrong when you're 3D printing plastic too, but this is a whole other layer of variables of things that can happen. You know, they're all subject to gravity too. So something like this, as the printer is like printing this, it's soft. So it is gonna kind of tip down over time to the point where Diego sometimes actually has to do like a model that is slightly different than the finished piece in order for it to finish correctly. Also, as things get really tall, they can kind of fall over because they're so soft. They've actually fired a couple of these pieces and keep them around for memory's sake. And sometimes with uh, stuff like the dosing cup, they'll actually modify them after they print. And, you know, to get this spout this way, they'll actually stick a tube in here and give a little bit of pressure while it's still soft before they fire it. Also, because you can control the extruding speed of the clay, the layer heights don't necessarily need to be consistent or flat. So you can see the layer heights on this kind of slope up and then back down. So there's a lot of different flexibility there. And because of all this, Dio actually ended up coding his own software to be able to print some of this stuff. So pretty crazy stuff. A lot of testing, a lot of failures, small scales. Really, these people were just passionate about creating these things and they're trying to figure out a way to do it. So the more I learned, the more I ended up having a lot of appreciation for what they were doing. Then once you're through all the software stuff, you actually get to the clay. Now, obviously, if you're gonna extrude clay through a 3D printer, it's gotta be a very specific consistency and makeup. So they were getting this clay from like one guy in California, he's actually out now. So they're sourcing, trying to find a new clay that will work. And even after you get it, if you get like a bubble in your clay, that can like ruin a whole print. So they ended up getting this thing called a pug mill, which is this huge uh, piece of equipment that is designed to de-air clay and get all the bubbles out before you extrude it. And they would put all their clay through this before sending it through the printer. And on top of that, because the clay was so hard to get, anytime they had a failure, they would like throw it back in the pug mill, obviously without firing it, and get it back into the system in a fresh print. And I forgot to mention, they're doing all of this in their two car garage. <laughs> <laughs> Diego sent me some pictures and there's pottery wheel in there. You can see some bikes in behind it. So, you know, just wonderful the way that these guys are passionately pursuing this while having these constraints on their creativity. Also, anytime they want to even change the clay, like going from light to dark, they need to totally clean out their pug mill, which is a very time intensive process, as well as the whole 3D printer to even do another color. And then you get to the glazing, which is beautiful, but as beautiful as it is, the chemistry of the glaze and the clay can react differently depending on the color of the clay. So it all is very complicated. There's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of failure. And there is actually a big process from the time that a piece goes from modeled in software to the final piece. And when you get to the final piece, they are absolutely incredible. This little espresso cup, I think they call this their organic cup. You just don't see shapes like this very often in traditional ceramic and some of their vases and stuff. There just is no way that you can make it any other way than 3D printing. And they just seem like they are exactly the way that they're supposed to be. But it really is a process, you know? It's not like these things are printed, they go in the oven and they go on the website, you know? The bottom of all this stuff, for example, you know, they've hand kind of scraped and finished the bottom layer so that it's nice and smooth when it sits on something. You have two stages of firing, the glazing. There is a lot of manual labor and a lot of work that goes into not just bringing a piece from conception to reality, but also once you know how it is actually supposed to be, actually delivering that piece into a finished product. And I asked Diego like, dude, this is like, a lot of work. And both Diego and Victoria told me, you know, like, we just love doing this. 
We love creating these things. We love seeing people enjoy them. We're not into the mass market thing. We like operating in low volume. We love experimenting. And if other people can enjoy it, that's great. They really just love what they're doing. They have a fan in me, and I think what they're doing is super cool. Now, getting their stuff because they operate in small volumes can be a little hard. So a couple favorite things of mine, uh, the dosing cup. I love, 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 love these dosing cups. They tend to sell out quickly. So you kind of got to keep your eye out for them and get them when they come along. These organic espresso cups also really like these. The uh, sea break glaze in some of their pieces is probably my favorite. All their stuff is beautiful though. Their vases, they do all kinds of neat little short run pieces. So if you want to support these guys, you know, this isn't a sponsored video. I just found these guys and I really liked what they're doing. So I had to share it. But the best spot I asked them is actually just to go and follow them on Instagram. You know, sometimes if they do a short run of stuff, they'll just post it on their stories and say, hey, we made four of these. Does anybody want them? And you can kind of get in that way. They do have a website as well, but I'll leave their Instagram down below in the description. And even if you don't ever want to get their stuff, you know, honestly, just having their videos pop up in my feed is so satisfying to watch, you know, just watching the printer, you know, going around and doing these beautiful ceramic pieces. So regardless of if you're going to get some ceramics or not, it's a kind of a fun follow. So make sure you go and follow them. If you want to check out some of mine and Sarah's other favorite prettiest coffee stuff, I'll leave a video right here for you. But also I want to know what you think of these ceramics. Do you think it's cool? If you have another ceramic artist that you love, I'd love to check them out. So make sure you drop them down there in the comments too. I hope your next cup of coffee is fantastic and we'll see you next time.